Today's episode is brought to you by the Pre-Market Movers. Check us out at thepremarketmovers.com. We are your number one source for everything Wall Street related, broadcasting to you live on social audio platforms worldwide. You can catch us on Clubhouse as well as Twitter Spaces, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 7.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check us out online at thepremarketmovers.com. That's the premarketmovers.com. We own another episode with Entrepreneur Kickback. I'm here with the good brother, Kendall LaShore. Man, oh man, good to be here. Good to be here, baby. What's going on? Hey, man, it's good. It's good to have you. You know, um, I like to give a little backstory for the audience always, and um, I spoke on you on previous episodes before with my homie uh, Corey Alexander, and I said the the talk I had with you last right. summer fleshed out this show. And uh wow. you know, I spoke about you. I was like, I'm a I'm gonna have him on, you know what I'm saying? He already agreed yeah. to come on. I didn't reveal who you were, but he yeah, is. Yeah. He is, Mr. Oh, Kendall Ashore. Man. Um man, for the, I appreciate it, man. Hey, hey, likewise. Um for those who, who don't know you or who may know you, you know what I'm saying? Give a brief introduction of yourself and your skill set. Oh man, but first let me say, I, man, I appreciate you having me on, man. I had no idea. Um, that you know the conversation that we had in my backyard was 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 going was going to spark this, and I'm I'm proud of you. First off, like man, this is this is something that everybody can't start to everybody just have a hard time starting something. You in it, and so man, kudos to you. Keep doing what you're doing, bro. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. So yeah, basically, Kendall Lashore, man, born and raised here in the city of Detroit, from the east side, the best side. I- um, Went to <laughs> went to uh, Detroit Persian High School, man. Played basketball. You know, come from a background of single mother, uh, couple, uh, one brother, uh, two brothers now, but one brother back then. You know, a mom who worked from everything when it comes to department stores, grocery stores, just doing anything to try to take care of me and my brother, man. And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm that's where I come from. My family is 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 you from. A situation where we didn't have a lot and uh we, you know we were just kids in the neighborhood just trying to do do the best we can so you know that's pretty much it about me is where i'm from currently right now i um own and operate uh, group homes adult foster care homes uh, we take care of individuals from elderly mental health autism um, behavior problems just a, a range of adult individuals that we provide services to throughout Detroit, throughout Metro Detroit. We have homes in Ferndale. We also have homes in Fraser, Michigan. Mm-hmm. And uh, we just provide services, man. You know, I got a team of individuals and we just go out and just give back to the community. This is something I've been doing for at least about, at least seven years now. And you know, that's that's a, just a brief and we'll get into some other stuff, I'm sure as we go. Oh, definitely. Hold on, interesting. Cause it says group, <laughs> group homes. Yes, sir. Huh. Yes, sir. Okay. We we gonna we gonna tap back into that. You know what I'm saying? I wanna yeah. I wanna get into your mindset a little bit because now we know sir. where you're from. You know yes, sir. you sound like the average black kid in Detroit to me. You know, you got some talents. Yes. You got some talents, you yes, got a strong family structure. That sounds Detroit as hell to me. Uh <laughs> now with that. Where did that entrepreneurial mindset come from? Where does that drive stem from? For me, man, and you know, the interesting thing about being an entrepreneur, you have so many different ups and downs, so many different reasons on why you do stuff. So the the reason why I do stuff now, I can honestly say it's different then. And one, when I started and I wanted to venture off and be an entrepreneur, I just really had a hard time of not having the freedom to do simple things, you know, simple, you know, the freedom to, you know, not have to wake up at seven, eight o'clock in the morning and, and be somewhere, having to report to somebody, 
having to ask for time off, having to, you know, go on vacation. You got to plan a week in, week in advance. So it's just, you know, I've always been the type of person that like to be free. You know, I'm just, you know, that's just, I operate better under, under freedom. And I just didn't see no way for me to operate in who I was as far as my full capacity with not the ability to, to kind of move about how, you know, how, how I want to, for the most part. And, and that, so initially that was my reason. It, it wasn't necessarily about, you know, I wanted to be the big CEO with a big suit and tie and walking around like I'm, you know, this big time businessman. Like, that ain't really, you know, that's, that's never been me and, and, and it's just not. I just really like freedom. And I like for people around me to have freedom. I like people to be able to express themselves and kind of move how they want to, you know, how they want to move. I think, you know, under, under a situation where you can find, you're going to hit a ceiling. And, and I just, I just felt, you know, man, it's, it's really no ceiling for, for, for people like, you know, especially people like myself and yourself that got so many different aspects, so many different talents, so many different things they can do. And if you, if you're in a situation where you, you confine, you would never get to it. You will never get to it, man. So that's, that's kind of, you know, to kind of break it down, how I started off and wanted to be an entrepreneur. That's, that's simple, but, but deep. I, I, I think I, sh- I share, I think most people share that relation. They just may not yeah. understand it yet. And, yeah, yeah. and like, like you said, it's like, it's so many ups and downs and you know, I'm rambling a little bit, but I think the point yeah, is yeah, there. No. Yeah. The point yeah. is, the point is definitely no. there. Cause it's like in life, you're going to have good and bad times in general, no matter what sure. you do, if you just do everything your parents told you to do, it's going to go up and down. Right. But exactly. Exactly. if you go as an entrepreneur, if you keep that same thought and move forward and what you say to me is that you wanted to be free in every aspect, Correct. every, you want to every express aspect. yourself. You want to be able to get up. You want to be able to work whoever you want to work with. And you want to be able to spend your time within reason. And correct. I don't think that's unreasonable for every person to have to some degree. I don't think that's unreasonable. Yeah. No, 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 I'm not, not saying that you can't, you, you, it's impossible for you to find that within some type of, um, you know, structure, job or something like that. I mean, it's, people do it all the time, you know what I mean? But it's, just, it's, I think it's an individual, it's an individual kind of thought process. Like every, some people is okay with being confined in a situation. Some people is okay with nine to five. I know my structure. I know my schedule. I know when I'm getting paid. Some people is okay with that. And that's, I've had to learn that's okay. For that person, so it, it's not a. I, I call it. I say I'm starting to say in a lot of everything is not a one size fits all. Mm-hmm. So like you, you can't. It, it's, it's, I've I've had so many different experiences, talked to so many different people, from basketball star athletes to, you know, people with mental mental illness to family friends to people who uh, who got millions and millions of dollars. You know, fi- bankers, and it's like everybody is so different, and. You can, and that's why it's hard to construct, cause put put somebody to, you know, a nine to five situation, man. It's, it's just, it's it's not saying that it's it's not it's not for everybody. And, and for me, you know, that has ended up shifting even off that way. And so now I'm able to not only be free, but able to really, you know, help other people to, you know, be free. So one of the things that I do in my company, I really, I'm, I'm really not that that strict because I want my employees to feel like they have the freedom to come talk to me for real, to come say, Hey, you know, I, I need a day. I need a mental health break. You know, I need to be able to go spend some time with my kids and, or do this. And it's really not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud in the fact that I'm, I'm, I'm the way that can be that type of employer that can understand that it's, you you know, people got stuff they need to do. And, you know, I I don't want nobody to feel like that. They, um, they confined to a certain situation because I want everybody to grow. Like I want everybody to grow. And I give you an example. I just hired a new program manager, fresh out of fresh out of college. She is um uh, she has a master in health administration, brand new. Um, this I think she had like one or two jobs before. And that she and I can just tell she's in that mindset of, you know, um corporate, um, you know, let me be let me be standard. And 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 I'm like, wow, man, that's how really we are trained to be as a professional. Like, and, and no matter how many times I'll be like, relax, it's cool. 
cool. It's me. I'm just Kendall. I know I'm, I'm I know I'm hiring you for one of the job of your life, but it's okay. Like, you know what I mean? You don't have to feel like I have to be this way or I have to say certain things. I have to be politically related. Like, I want you to be yourself. Like, be who you are because hiding behind, you know, uh, the, the, the corporate world or professional world is really, you just really doing yourself a disservice. You know what I mean? And anybody, and if you don't really want to be around nobody who is going to not allow you to be yourself, you know, not allow you to express what's going on comfortably. You know what I mean? Um, I, 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 am I making sense to you? I'm no, you, you, you making it's, sense. It's I'm writing in. stuff down. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's like, man, you know, it's like you want to, you want to surround yourself around people, or even work for situations where you are allowed to be yourself. And it's hard, especially, especially in our community. Like we just, you know, everybody, we getting judged from them, they, and us. And, and it's like, it's, it's hard, you know, so so it, it, you have to learn early just to kind of be yourself. Like, who you are is good enough. You know, it it just is. You know what I mean? Some people have certain skill sets to do certain things, but it doesn't make you better or worse than nobody else. You know what I mean? So you come come as you are, and then we'll work on the things that need to be improved. Some like some like what we're doing now. Like, you starting off the podcast, I'm sure you your first one was like, uh, then your second one was like, okay, I'm getting a little better, now your third one. Like you like, I'm like, dang, you know what I mean? You a different person from when we first talked, when I first had that conversation. I see the light. You confident. You bright. You know what you're talking about. You you got a structure. You know what I mean? And so it's like that's what you want to you want to be in situations where you can be like that and anywhere. You know what I mean? And I know we're talking about entrepreneurs stuff, but like a lot of people forget, you know, who they are or don't come to a conclusion of who they are. But before trying to become an entrepreneur, like mm-hmm. a lot of people say, you can't mix business and pleasure or personal. Your, my personal life and my business life, like that don't even make really no sense. Like who, like you is one and the same. Like you can't. It's really. It's, it's no really. Who you are as a business person is who you are. Who should be who you are as a as an individual. You know what I mean? I, you know, I, I don't sound, want to sound like I'm jumping all over the place, bro. But oh no, this want to make sure I'm, I'm making sense. Man, one no, you making perfect sense, and and it's lining up with a lot of what a lot of my previous guests have said, just in different words. But yeah, you know, um, I'm gonna quote Elwick Baker, who's on episode one. You got to tap into what's in you first, yeah, and then tap into what's around you. And right. shoot, right. and he was just saying that, just how we talking now. We just talking, we freestyling, we saying how we feel, and that came out. And I, and it's been sticking. Yeah. And every guest I've had, wow. that that message was there, you know, you. some way, shape, or form. So you make perfect sense, you know. Got you. Actually, got you. Got you. I, I think you just you just debunked the myth in entrepreneurship, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. yeah. And, and and I'm talking as if you know this is something easy to do because it's, it's really not. You know, one thing about being an entrepreneur is is you you got there's gonna be some seasons where it's just you and the computer or you and whatever product you pushing and, and you got to be okay with that and it may not be no checks coming in it may not be nothing you know it, it's not um you know automatic you know the button the money just don't come in or you don't start bringing in any type of you know uh, resources but by pressing a button or by showing up sometimes your ass can show up and nothing happened for six months but you still showing up, but you may not, you know, you may not get paid for it. You know what I mean? And just, I'm speaking in general, that's just in any business. So you got to show up and sometimes you may not get the results immediately. Like you may have to put some time in, some work in and be able to say, and stick to it. And that's one of the, the, the hurdles. It's hard to press through and keep jumping over them hurdles because the hurdles never stop. If it's the, the consumers, if it's the the the, res- the lack of resources, lack of funding, um, not or if it's the the police or licensing or some type of you know governing bodies that may not like what you're doing or try to block that. So it's so many different hurdles that you have to jump over as an entrepreneur in any business, any business. And I have done multiple of them, you know, as you know. So it's like what I've learned is that you know you got to be willing to fight it out. You got to be going for something more than what. You know, more you got to be fighting for something more than what you you know believe in. You got to really go for it. You know what I'm saying? And and if you got to have that freedom to be able to do that, um, which is you know, talking as if you know, food, you know, 
people don't have bills to pay and stuff like that. Yeah, that's 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 true. You gotta you gotta eat. You gotta figure out a way to eat. When I started my company, I was working. I used my my job to fund my business, and I did that for three years. <laughs> I just, it just so sometimes if you ain't you know we ain't, we wasn't raised with nobody you know how to do financial literacy. Mama ain't leave me nothing. You know what I mean? So uh, sometimes you're gonna have to do double duty in order to find your dream. It's just, you know, yeah, you gotta eat, but this dream gotta get, gotta become true too. You know what I'm saying? Just as much as bad as you gotta eat. You want this dream that you want for yourself and your business or whatever you wanna do for your family, that's gotta come true. So you gotta be able to do both of them at one time. And that's the that's the grind part that, it, you know, if you ain't, if you ain't got that in you, then we, we, we can move on to the next. <laughs> hey, <is laughs> you know it, what I mean? Just, just be honest about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, it's a grind. Yeah, let's be honest about it. And it's okay. And it's not no judge. You ain't no weaker person. Less in person is just, you don't want it bad enough. It, you know it, what I mean? And, and I, you don't want it bad enough. It may not be for you. That's it. Okay. See, see now I hear a little history about how your thought process and where you came from is like, Sir. you you got some help along the way. Who who was some, some major influence in your life to help you develop your strengths as an entrepreneur? Man, you know what? I have, uh, uh, and I, I've been blessed and fortunate to have an abundance of of, of uh, people that have blessed me along the way. And I have met one of my mentors, Galen Duncan, right off the top of my head. He's he's a social worker. Um, he's also a NBA um, director, player development. Um, you know, he's been in plenty plenty of different arenas. I think his recent job is he's. Um, the athletic director for Chicago, Illinois. Um, but he was a, a gentleman, you know, when I was coming up in college, he kind of took me under his wing and every step of the way kind of showed me, you know, how to be yourself and be be professional. You know, it's it's hard as a as a young black black kid in college and you trying to fit in with everybody, but you, you know, you know you where you're from and some of your 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 your, your abilities may not be as as profound as some of the other cultures or races that come from certain other backgrounds. And uh, so, I, you know, he was a guy that kind of saw that and, and made sure that um, he let me know that I, I'm on the right track. Like you're doing a good job. You know what I mean? So he's, he, he kept me, he kept me going. Um, and this is an abundance, man. It's too many for me to name. I had a great example. My brother, my older brother has always been, you know, I think a lot of his life has kind of been, doing the things necessary to to be doing him doing things necessary to be a good leader because he know he had a little brother like me coming up you know what i mean so it's a lot, a lot of stuff he probably didn't do because like i can't do that my little brother watch me or you know I, I, you know it's so it just that's the type of mindset he has he got that's that, that's the type of family we come from so it, it was always good to have that just a couple of uh, man I, i've always been surrounding myself around older gentlemen too we've been I was younger. So when I was in my twenties, man, most of my guys I hung out with, not necessarily hung out with, I hung out with my guys, guys, but the guys who I, when I was, when I was with them, I was soaking up, you know, they was older, 30, 40, you know, kind of been through some stuff, you know, been married, been in business, been in careers, doing different stuff. So that helped me out along the way too, as a young fella is being around guys that, you know, it's a little more seasoned. I think, you know, if anybody can take away from a, some, somebody young, to always try to encourage a young man to kind of grab get gravitate towards being around somebody older. You know what I mean? This is a little bit older. It kind of helps the gap because when you're in the same age group and I do the same thing, don't nobody know more than what. So, you know, you're kind of trying to figure it out. But, but if you're around somebody that's a little more seasoned, a little more older than you, you, you can kind of tell the difference. Like, okay, this, this guy kind of know what he's talking about. He just, you know what I'm saying? Just, just, just trying to think of something to say or trying to be right, not knowing. I would say that so um, mentors is important, man. I, I st- and I still, those same people, I still have them to this day. Like I, I can pick up the phone and call and say, Hey man, this is what I'm going through. Like I, and I didn't appreciate that as much as I do now later on in my career. You know, I probably could have had some more, some, some better nights if I just would have been, hey, let me call, let me call, you know, somebody who can kind of help me, even if it wasn't about the situation, but just can say a good word, a wisdom word or something you know, one of them old school words that you're like, okay, yeah, I'm good. You know what I mean? That you can get through. And so, like, you know, you got to be able to have that. 
gotta be able to have that, bro. <laughs> I'm with you. Like, hey, Unc, man, I need some help, man. Just need yeah, the vent. Yeah, yeah, I need something. <laughs> wow, I just need something, bro. Give me something, man. Give me something. I, I got to I got to uh, older, older guy. Now, I can call him right now. I don't have to say two words. I can say, man, give me something, man. I need something. And I, he'll just start talking. And whatever he says is, is usually something I needed to hear. And it's like, you got to have a few people that you you comfortable with calling and they know you or know know you know some things that you're doing and going through that you can call and get some type of you know words of wisdom or encouragement going forward okay and that's what mentors are for me yeah right on all right all right shoot all right let's let's tap into one of your companies um you brought up the group okay. homes uh yeah. let's 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 go on here and start there what was your uh well first can you give a elementary explanation of like what that is and what you provide? Yeah, so basically, it's it's, it's home healthcare. Just a home healthcare agency will provide um, supportive supportive assistance to individuals that you know that need some assistance in the community. You may have you know um, someone with autism, or you may have an individual with schizophrenia or uh, a bipolar disorder, dementia, just a variety, variety, whatever disorder, and they may need a little help. In the community, I meaning a little help shopping, budgeting their money, uh, help um, with uh, transportation to medical and doctor's appointments. They may need assistance with finding jobs, um, need assistance with helping them mitigate issues with family. So just just an assistance company, you know that that's kind of what we do. So we got in two in two folds. We have our own facility, which is in the community and homes, and then we also provide services in other people's homes. So we'll actually send our staff, our team, to go into somebody else's home that need, you know, a caregiver. So that's, you know, pretty much in a nutshell. That's what, you know, one of the one of the companies that one of the things that we do. Damn, my wheels turning now. How long did it take? <laughs> Twenty minutes. Uh, so, uh, so you gotta give me back for part two, man. You got to give me back for part two. Man. Oh, oh, definitely. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. It's, it's, it's not enough time to, to get everything out in one conversation. That's for sure. All right. you Okay, you say, think of this correctly. So, like, you will get a home, right? And then mm-hmm. let's say someone has uh, epilepsy. Mm-hmm. And then what you do is they sign up to your program. They have mm-hmm. a place to stay and assistance mm-hmm. on top of that. Correct. Pretty much it. That's pretty much it. So they'll, so if it, you know, if you, if you got some type of issue you need help with, you know, you can come into one of our homes um, and then we'll provide you staffing. We'll provide the individual staffing and assistance to try to re- reach whatever goal. His goal could be, you know, getting back independent, you know. So if that's one of your goals, we'll try to, you know, go in and, you know, help you realize how this is your money, this is how much money you got for food, this is how much money you got to, you know, put away for cigarettes and just kind of help you along the way to be independent or it could be a long-term situation where you know this person will need assistance and and care for the remainder of their life and then you know one of our organization will be you know one of the facilities that you know we can provide that for you or if we can't provide it for you we'll try to we'll try to link you with you know some of our partners that you know can can so and that's pretty much you know in a nutshell what we do hmm. um and, and and this and this the the, the the need is over over you know the need is a high demand for it because everybody needs some, I mean, a lot of regular individuals need some type of assistance on something. So just imagine if you have, you know, you know, you, you was unfortunate to be diagnosed with a mental health disorder or disorder, you was in a situation where you had a head injury or, you know, you just ain't got the, 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 you know, something unfortunate happened. And so you going to, you know, you need somebody, you're going to need people to, you know, help you and, and, and be there for you. Everybody doesn't have, you know, family. You know, and even if you do, it's, it's it's a tough job to ask somebody to be your caregiver. You know, you know, and, and regardless of, you know, mama, brother, daddy, sister, to ask another individual to be solely responsible for me, it's hard. And, and it's just hard. You know, a lot of people say, "Well, man, don't you got a mama? Don't you got a, I mean, a brother or a sister or auntie? Or, like what?" And it's like, it's you. It's hard to ask somebody to give up your life, give up my life for you. Like that's not something that is um easy to do you know what i mean because this you have to have a lot of patience with you know mental health people who got some mental health disorders like you really have to have you know a spirit of patience and everybody don't have it 
And so, you know, you have a lot of individuals who need, you know, people to assist them and care for them to get them, you know, to have some type of quality of life. Mm. That's kind of like, the, you know, one of our missions that we do at Empower Living. I, I used to run transportation for a home care company. Um, yep. Uh, shouts to affordable home care. They supposed to be on too. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. now I'm what, cause you're, you you legit helping people who actually needs help. Is this a, this is a state or fund or federal program? I'm assuming. Um, no, we're private. No, we're private. We're, we're a private agency, but we, we utilize, um, you know, um, we utilize, uh, community mental health programs. Um, so it's, you know, if someone, if someone is in a, um, a situation where they are receiving some type of services from community mental health. So we just kind of partner with them and, you know, they kind of place people with us. So, you know, it's, we're not state ran, we, we're probably funded, but we get contracts through different counties and, and um, different counties in the state to try to provide, be able to provide these services. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, yeah. So the county and the state, they pay, you know, they pay for it, you know, so, but we do have some private pay or insurance companies, Things like that. So it just come from a variety of different different ways. It's depending on the the case. Okay, but that's still interesting because at least that way, it sounds like more more often than less, yeah. You you work with someone who's or you work with an agency or organization that's looking for your services and that's willing to pay something towards that individual. So it's a win win win. Can't lose. Dang. Can't lose. Can't lose, can't lose man. It's, it's 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 definitely uh yeah, I mean you it's it's the need is there. Um it's not easy. It's about far, but you know, it, you just gotta have a heart for it, man. Like, you know, you just gotta have you gotta have a heart for it, which you know, most most people I'm a believer that most people are good. Like I, I look at it kinda like that way. Most people are good, they wanna be good, they just for some whatever reason, have a hard time doing that. So, like, so most people, so I mean, anybody can do it. You just gotta, you know, you gotta really look out for people. Like, you gotta really want to look out for people. You know what I mean? Because you can do it and do it raggedy, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not gonna, it's, it never works. Doing people wrong or, you know, doing people less than, it never works out in your favor in any situation. You know what I'm saying? It, it, just, it just never do. So it's like you, it's something that is a need and it's something like, you know, that's what I do. I'm a master. I'm, I went to school for social work. So okay. I'm in the helping profession. You know what I mean? So that's kind of what I do. I've always wanted to do that. So that's, that's kind of, uh, you know, another reason that my background is in social work too. I forgot to mention that part. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's why I ain't just come up out the sky like, yeah, I'm going to start doing group on. I should have, I should have left. I went, I am a master's of social worker, um, master's of social work from Wayne State University. I graduated um, with my master's in 2005. You know, I've been in the field, you know, from the beginning. And, um, you know, just, so it's not nothing new. So I've been doing this for 20 years, you know what I mean? Uh, 20 plus years where I've been either in a situation where I'm working for organizations or helping other companies start, you know, just a variety of different different things like that. So, yeah, that's to, to kind of bring a little more history back to, to myself personally. Oh man, we I keep getting these uh these social <laughs> entrepreneurial flexes, man. That's that's a flex right there. You know what I'm saying? He, he said I'm a social worker. Now, if you walked up and said yeah. said that like I'm a social, they're like, oh yeah, you're a social worker. But then when you yeah, tell yeah, them, no, I, yeah, I'm a yeah, I'm a real social worker. Yeah, I, I, this is what I do. You know what I mean? I was born to be a social worker. You know what I mean? As far you know, and that just means you were born to be assistance to somebody or be able to provide some type of avenue to make some type of connection to somebody to further their quality of life. That's how I always define social work. Hmm. You know, you are, you are an avenue or a beacon for, to make connections, to assist people to find a better quality of life. And that's my own personal definition of what social work is. So a lot of people, social work, oh, them the people that come in and take the kids. <laughs> that's, what CPS is called. that's how people think of it, but it's, 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 it's more of a, it's a linkage. Social work is definitely a linkage between a community, private individuals, and just trying to link people to have a better quality of life. Oh, that's, that's, that's a cool superpower. Yeah, man. That's, yeah, that, man. that's a superpower. cool. Superpower. Yep. 
Yeah, I, I I like powers. You know, um, yeah, I yeah. I believe we all have superpowers. Some are some are out in the open. Some are dormant. You know, right. but we we have them, and we have more than one, and we can learn some too. So yes, I, I'm a yes, believer sir. of that. So that that's an interesting. That's a very interesting power. Next time on the Entrepreneur Kickback. One, you definitely got to get a business name. So you want to, you know, get your LLC to start off with. Get your LLC, you know, start developing the logo. I think a lot of people don't put a lot of thought or effort into creating like that logo, that image, who they want to be, who they want to identify as, things like that. So, you know, you really got to spend some time on, you know, the name and, and really, you know, pick that out. But then, you know, for the most part, it's really is just step one is just going to the state website, the lot of application to be a um a home care provider, you know, sending in some paperwork, get some insurance license and sending it in. And they everybody it's not like you gotta have like a degree, a social work degree, or anything like that. You just gotta have a operating business and you have to make sure you um I'd like to thank you guys for kicking back with us. If you wanna connect with us on social media. You can follow us on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook at The Entrepreneur Kickback, all one word. We also building out a YouTube channel. You can follow us on The Patent House on YouTube. You can also catch me on Twitter. If you want to hit me up on Twitter, I'm at Podcaster Patton on Twitter. I'm also on Clubhouse. If you want to hit me on Clubhouse, you can hit me at ppatton248 on Clubhouse. Also, if you want to check out our website, theentrepreneurkickback.com, right now you can listen to the show and it also connects you to all our social media and our links. And you can listen to us on the website and all podcasting platforms. I'd like to thank you guys. Peace.